Hi, my name is June Pagan. I'm a private health chef and I'm going to demonstrate for you right now how to make a chicken bone broth using chicken feet. This is a very almost considered a medicinal broth in the holistic medicine field. Uh, I've had many clients that have taken this broth to reverse the damage done by osteoporosis and also after surgery when they've had some type of orthopedic surgery. I'm starting to prepare this chicken broth with two pounds of free range organic chicken, vegetarian fed from Mary's, and also a half a pound of chicken feet. Chicken feet, up until maybe about a year ago, were not even available in the marketplace, but I find them regularly at Whole Foods Market. So, in order to prepare the chicken bones to be simmered and for them to, to leach the minerals from the bone, we must first start by adding vinegar to the actual uh, bones. So I am using a product called Silva White Wine Vinegar, and this is in a spray bottle. Technically, we're supposed to add about a tablespoon or two of the vinegar. I don't do that. I generally just spray maybe about a teaspoon of vinegar onto the, onto the bone. And then I'm going to toss it and let that vinegar seep into the actual bone itself. And this will take about 10 minutes, so I'll be back in 10 minutes to show you the other ingredients that go into the broth and we'll get the broth started. Hi, we're back again. It's been 10 minutes and we have let the vinegar soak into the bone. And I did forget to mention to you that chicken feet have talons. And you may wonder, do I have to remove those talons before I prepare the broth? Well, my, the answer is no, you don't have to. They're very clean, especially the product coming from Whole Foods. So the other ingredients that are going into this broth are red onion. I think I had talked to you about red onion in the aromatics um, session. Uh, we have a red onion with the skin. The skin is very important. It contains most of the polyphenols. We have celery, organic celery. You do not need to peel the celery. We're making a broth that will be strained eventually. We have carrots with some carrot tops, and we also have parsley. So I'm going to begin to prepare the vegetables for the broth. I'm going to take the necks and backs and place them into a about a four quarter stock pot. Then I'm going to take the half pound of the chicken feet and follow placing that into the pot. I'm going to coarsely chop the red onion. Right now I have about one and a half onions. It's a rough chop, skin and all, root included. I have one garlic clove that I'm going to smash, just throw into the pot. I have three to four stalks of celery, which I'm going to coarsely chop and add to the pot. Roots and all. This is a very simple preparation. You could also use chicken bone that's left over from perhaps a dinner, a roasting. After you roast the chicken, you could save the bones if you're not ready to prepare. A broth, you can place the bones in the freezer, collect them until you have about two and a half pounds of bone matter, and then you can add that to your pot. This is not a chicken broth, this is a chicken bone broth. You do not need to have any of the chicken meat in the broth for, to obtain the medicinal value. We have a handful of parsley, this is a nice addition to the broth. It adds chlorophyll. Basically, that's it. We're going to cover the broth, the vegetables and the chicken with water, filtered water. And then we'll start the cooking process. We're not adding any salt at this time, no pepper, no seasonings at all. What we want to do is Start the flame, bring the broth up to a simmer, and then turn the flame down 
to a low setting and let the broth simmer for six to eight hours. Eventually what will happen is the bones will almost disintegrate and all of the minerals will leach from the bones into the broth. As I said in my segment on aromatics, when you cook onion skin especially, you, um, you, you still reap the benefits of the polyphenols because they leach out into the broth and you consume the broth. Hi, it's now eight hours later. I'm, I, I've actually let the broth cool down. It's at room temperature and I'm going to transfer it to a container and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator to chill for another probably six to eight hours. So basically what I do is I filter it through a colander. Now we have the broth that has been chilled for six to eight hours in the refrigerator and I'm skimming the fat off of the top of the broth. You can see that there's a thin layer of fat. Not a lot of fat because we've only used chicken bones. We haven't used any of the chicken meat. I'm pouring it into the a mason jar and you can see the color. It's rather dark in color and also it is it does have the proper consistency so it's ready to go we can take this broth and we can package it in one cup containers and put it in the freezer for your daily one cup portion and when it's time to reheat I'll show you a reheat right now we'll, we'll move on and I'll show you how to make a miso soup out of this broth Right now I'm going to prepare a miso soup with a cup of the broth. I like to have it that way every day. And what I'll do is I'll heat the broth to a simmer, just to a simmer. And then I'm going to add miso. Miso is a fermented bean paste. This one in particular is made with chickpeas and it is organic. I try to stay away from the soy, soy miso. It's a controversial ingredient, so um, I don't really use any soy in my work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the broth and then I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the miso. And that should flavor up the broth very nicely without adding any salt. You do not want to simmer miso in the broth. Miso is a very d delicate product and it is, you would lose the nutritional value if you were to heat it. So the general rule is to add it after you heat your broth. Another tip is to heat your broth on top of the stove as opposed to a microwave. Um, we don't really know if we lose any of the nutritional qualities of the broth by microwaving it. But to be on the safe side, it's best to cook on top of the stove. A few minutes have passed and our broth has been brought up to a simmer. At this point, I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to add the miso paste, one tablespoon. Okay, I'm adding it. And I'm going to use a whisk. I'll whisk it in. The miso paste will dissolve. If you want it to be very elaborate, you could add vegetables to this mixture. Right now, I'm just planning to have it as a miso broth, so we're done. It's ready to drink.